How's this it going? Is, good, man. I could get used to this. Following Jesus. That's right. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, Peter was right. Yeah. Yeah, he's the Messiah. Definitely the Messiah. You know what that means? Oh, yeah. It means somebody's going to be reestablishing the throne of David. Oh, setting up his kingdom. Yep, and I, mm. I was thinking, you know what? The Messiah mm -hmm. is going to need some help. Yeah. Right hand man, left hand man. Yep. And uh, the way things have been going, yeah. me, you, and Peter. Oh, I think yeah, uh, I think we got some pretty good uh, pretty good opportunity. Well, we are what you call the inner circle. That's right. That's right. That's Peter, good. James, John. Yeah. So, um, but I, here's the thing. You know, usually the king he has his right hand man. Yeah. And then he has his left hand man. And uh, I was doing some math the other day. There's t two men. Yeah. Two seats three of us. Sorry, little brother. You're going to set this one out. I've told you a thousand times. Just because I'm shorter doesn't mean I'm the little brother. Sure, James. Sure. Sure. I'm the oldest. Mm -hmm. I'm the biggest. Yeah. So, anyway. Mm. So, you know what that means? That means I'm pretty much a shoo-in. Uh, but... Because you're old? Yes. You're a shoo-in because you're old? Wisdom. Wisdom. Gray hair equals wisdom. Read, read Solomon Someone's sometimes. Someone's been reading your scriptures. So... I'm trying to figure out how can we get both of us in. Yeah. Three three people, two seats. So we gotta We gotta do something to get you into Peter's seat. Oh yeah, I got you. I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> yeah. he, he's our friend. Put that away. Oh. I don't I don't mean get rid of him, I mean just oh. get you in, kinda you get mean, you like, ahead. Take care no, of him. No, 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 no. No, we gotta find a way that Jesus would you know, he already favors the three of us. Yeah. We gotta find a way to get him to favor the two of us. I mean, Jesus does really love me. You keep I am saying the that. disciple it, he loves. You keep saying that. We're tight. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So we gotta find a way. How can we get an in I got with it. Jesus? I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. The IHOB mm -hmm. down in uh, Bethlehem. Yep. Yeah. All the, the original. Oh, uh, the OG. Yeah. yeah. He loves his pastries, those croissants. He, he does like the croissants from, uh, oh. from, from IHOB. But, you know, I don't think he's going to respond well to bribery. It's not bribery. That's positive reinforcement. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever yeah. Whatever way you paint it. I mean, I don't know. Um, so no to the IHOB. Yeah. No yeah. to the... Uh, no to the... Yeah, no. We're not going to do that. Well, Peter, you know, he's a good guy. I think we should keep him around. Um, we gotta find a way, like maybe somebody to, to, to speak up for us, you know, to vouch for us. If we can find somebody like that, uh, but I don't think any of the other guys are gonna do it. I mean, if we no, go to them no. and be like, hey, can you tell Jesus to make his right? You know, yeah. I think they're just gonna well, probably get mad at us. I mean, they already call us that name behind our back because we're kind of loud when we're preaching. And Sons of Thunder? Yeah. Yeah! I, 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 don't, I don't think they mean it as a compliment like That's, we take it. It's not a compliment? I don't think so. You sure about that? I'm not sure. Sons of but... Thunder sounds like a wrestling name. So. <laughs> yeah, I think they're saying we're loud. But anyway, no. What? I don't think we can ask them if there was just somebody. I, uh, who has always been there for us? I think I know where you're Fixed going. Fixed all of our sandwiches. Still makes our lunch before we get on the boat every morning. Oh, mother dearest. <laughs> Good idea. Hey, mom. Mom. Mom, can you tell Jesus? Mother. Hey, Matt, we're, we're starting. Come oh, on. Hey. hey. Welcome to Junior Church. Today is a special day here yeah, at Victory. Yeah, because we're eating Reese's Big Cups. That, that's not it. I mean, Ooh. Reese's Big Cups are special. I am a Reese's Cup fan. Uh, or I'm, I'm from the South. We call them Reese's. Reese's. Yeah, there's no I, but you know, we like to add letters. Uh, but anyway, Reese's, Reese's Cup Sunday. No, it's not Reese's. You, you messed me up. It's Family Focus Sunday. That's right. Uh, today uh, in, in our services, we are focusing on the family. Uh, pastor's preaching on the family. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're talking about family today. Yeah, we are. Hey, do you hear that? Mm -hmm. uh, someone's bowling. No, that's not bowling. That's yeah. thunder. Oh, what's right? We're learning about the sons of thunder. That's right. Boom. Two more brothers, James and John, uh, to carry on our family theme here in Junior Church. And so we're looking forward to that as we continue our new series mm -hmm. on the Acts of the Apostles. Learn about those men that Jesus chose to 
follow him. They shook the world. Yeah, they shook the world. Men that oh. shook the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so uh, I got an announcement to make. Oh, what's that? Now, we want to remind all the boys that, well, it's not really a reminder. This is new. New. New is fun. New. I don't know. I watched a movie a one time that said new is dangerous. Who said that? The Croods. Oh. <laughs> no, new is fun. Not a sponsor. Yeah, yes. Not a sponsor. Yes. No. No. We're new is fun on Junior Church. What do you got for us? Oh, yeah. We have the word of the week. So what you mean the question of the week? We do that every week. No, 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 no. Not the question of the week. We still have that. Yeah. The word of the week. The word of the week. Ah, that's kind of confusing. It sounds a little bit like question of the it week. It does sound like question of the week. Okay, okay. Hold on. Let me, let me brainstorm it. Watch out, he's going to think something might explode. Smoke coming out of ears. Oh, he's got it. Okay. Not word of the week. Not word of the week. Getting rid of that. Throw word of the week out, right? No more word of the week? Okay. Key word. The key word. The That's key better. Word. Say, so each week on Online Junior Church, we will have a key word. And when, we, when the key word shows up, it could uh -huh. be anywhere. It could be the intro. It could be... The closing, it could be during music time, it could be said during lesson time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This icon right here, ooh, ooh, that's new. Well, show up. Yeah, you didn't know that was I there, didn't did even you? know it was coming. You'll see this key, and we will let you know hey, this is today's keyword. You say, that's great, a keyword. What does that mean? What does this key unlock? I'm what glad does? you asked, Brother Tony. <laughs> okay, the keyword, it's awesome. Okay, you know how when you do the question of the week? Yep, question of the week. You get your name on the wheel. Blah, okay. Yep. You get one chance. One chance. No, 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 no more. I'm tired of this one chance stuff. I'm a second chance guy. Okay. So what you need to do, send in your question of the week. Send, send in, in the answer. answer. Seven one seven seven three nine six five three six. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Then, when you hear the key word, whatever it may be, let's just say for example, it's peanut butter and jelly. Oh, it's a lot of words. Okay. Let's say it's peanut butter. <laughs> okay. You say. You send in the keyword to the text line, the same text line. The same one? 739. Hey, you already know that number. 6536. Many of you have it memorized. That's okay. Right. Send in the keyword as well. If you send in the keyword and the question of the week, your name will go up there twice. Oh, yeah. Twice the amount of chances to win some prizes. That sounds good. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is listen for a word. And then text it in. You're already going to text in your answer. There you go. So we practice? Let's practice. Okay. <clears throat> so today in the book of Genesis, we learn about the very first peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. Boys and girls, that is the key word for today. Peanut butter and jelly. Sandwich. Sandwich. <laughs> that would be your key word. <laughs> we will tell you what we'll the tell word you. is. That is not today's key no, word. The key word one. is to come. Uh, you'll have to figure out where it's going to be. Look out for the keyword. I think we're going to have fun with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether it is you sending in your keyword or just us deciding what the keyword is going to be. Because sometimes it might be related to the lesson. I think today's will. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it might just be, you know, we might start to sing a song and be like the title of this song. Hey, Jesus is the keyword. Well, we don't know. We'll see. But look for the keyword so you can unlock, as Brother Matt said, a second chance to win one of our prizes. Well, mm -hmm. hey, we got a new series. Yeah. A new keyword to look yeah. for, but you know what we always have? Huh? A need to get started right, right now. now. We're family. <laughs> We're here family today. We're going to be singing about family. Brother singing Tony. about family on yeah. Family Focus Sunday. Yeah, music time. We're going to be singing about family. The family of God. All right. Oh yeah, you know that song. You may not know this one. Uh, this is uh, it's an old kind of a an old. Is it old now? I don't. I mean, probably we're I'm old, so it's probably. Breaking my heart. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, it's a good song. It's, it's a called good Family song. of God. Sing along if you know it. If not, keep practicing. Listen yeah. as we try to sing it too. Okay, ready? All right, let's go. <laughs> Here we go. You Do may notice we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family and these folks are so near. When one has a heartache, we all shed a tear and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, 
and cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. All right, young people, it is Bible time. I've got my Bible. Hopefully you've got yours. And today we're going to be in the book of Mark, chapter number one. Mark, chapter number one. And as we mentioned in the opening, we're continuing our look at the 12 apostles, the men who shook the world, as it were. And looking at these first 12 men that Jesus called personally to serve with him and come after him. And here today we're going to learn as we mentioned before, about two more brothers. Last week we learned about the brothers Peter and Andrew. Today uh, we're going to learn about James and John who were also brothers. The Bible tells us uh, in verse number 16 of Mark chapter 1, Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, Simon uh, we know as Peter, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus called or said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And so that's what we learned about last week, how Peter and Andrew, they, they, they heard about Jesus, they spent time with Jesus, and then when Jesus called them, they followed. But the Bible says in verse number 19 that Jesus had gone a little further. So Jesus is walking down that seaside there in Galilee, and he comes to Peter and Andrew's boat, and he sees those men there, and he says, Come, follow after me and I'll make you to become fishers of men. And they left their boat and followed him. And so they continue to walk. And as they walk just a little further, the Bible says they see another boat. And in that boat, uh, we see that uh, he had gone a little further. He saw James, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, who were also in the ship mending their nets. And so these men are fishermen as well. The first thing we learn about James and John is they were fishermen with their brother, or with their father rather, Zebedee. Zebedee was their, their father and, and he owned some boats. Maybe he owned a fleet of boats because we see in verse number 20 uh, that when they left, Jesus called to them straightway and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants. And so we see that uh, these men weren't just fishermen, but their father uh, owned some ships. And, and not only that, he also uh, had enough ships and enough uh, business to do that he had hired servants. We didn't see that with Peter and Andrew. We don't know if maybe it just doesn't mention it. The Bible doesn't always mention things like this. Or, or maybe if it was just they kind of did their own thing, they were their smaller company. But we see uh, that just like Peter and Andrew, James and John were fishermen and we also learn uh, that their father is named Zebedee. We also know from the, from the scripture uh, that these men, James and John, were also from Bethsaida. Uh, I remember last week that's where uh, uh, Peter and Andrew were from. So no doubt these men knew the other two men that were following Jesus when they were called. And from this point on, James and John would follow after Jesus Christ. And, and they would see the miracles and things that he did. And uh, over in chapter number three, we learned something else about these men. Uh, and that was that they probably had quite a personality on them. Now, I don't know exactly how they earned this nickname. But in Mark chapter number three, the Bible tells us uh, there's a list here, uh, starting in verse number 13, of how Jesus, uh, the men that Jesus called to follow him, and it says in verse number 17, And James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. You see, for whatever reason, we don't really know why it doesn't say, but Jesus had given these two fellows a nickname. Uh, many people believe that maybe it was because of just the way they talked or way the way they preached, that maybe they were very loud. Uh, in one place we see that they wanted to call down fire from heaven and, and, and get rid of some people who, who they didn't agree with. And, and so we don't know exactly what it was, but Jesus, for whatever reason, named these two men the sons of thunder. By the way, uh, just so you know, that's our key word today. The key word for today's lesson is thunder. So you want to make sure you send that in. But they were called the sons of thunder. But one of the things that I 
I want to point out about James and John is those two, along with Peter, became kind of an inner circle for Jesus. Uh, later on in, uh, in the uh, New Testament, we see in, uh, that, uh, that Jesus would go up to a mountain, and while he was on that mountain, uh, the Bible says he was transfigured. And, and while he was transfigured there, the Bible says that he began to speak to Moses and Elias. Uh, and as he went up to that mountain, just like Moses had taken Joshua kind of up the mountain with him to uh, where Jesus gave him the, the, um, the commandments, Jesus had chosen Peter and James and John to go up with him on that mountain. And while they were there, uh, they saw all of this happening. Imagine that. Uh, imagine seeing Jesus. The Bible says he, he shone like the sun, and he began to speak to Moses and Elias. And, and Peter and James and, uh, and John were like, man, it is good for us to be here. And, and this is a great place to be. As a matter of fact, they wanted to build a tabernacle to each one of those uh, people and, and just stay up there and, and worship and so uh, we see there uh, later on in Jesus' ministry as he's getting ready to go uh, and, and getting ready to die, the Bible says that he went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and he was going to pray there. And, and he told his disciples, listen, you wait here and I'm going to go a little further and pray. And the Bible says that he took Peter and James and John and he went a little further and he told those men, he said, listen, you stay here and I'm going to go a little further and I want you to pray. But, but as he went to pray, he took these three with him. They, they form that inner circle, those, those close-knit friends to Jesus. In the book of John, uh, we read that uh, there the, uh, the, the uh, disciples were with Jesus, uh, and as they sat down for supper, they were discussing things. And the Bible says that they, uh, they, they tell John, listen, John asked Jesus who it is that's going to be betray him because the Bible says that he, he sat next to Jesus and even laid his head on his shoulder, on his chest and, and as, they were, as they were talking. And so John was very, very close to Jesus. As I look at these two brothers, uh, there's something that I see along with, with, uh, uh, with Peter, but I see a closeness to Christ. And, and young people, uh, I want to encourage you, be close to Jesus. Get, get close to Jesus. You're really how can I be close to Jesus? He's up in heaven and I'm down here on earth and I can't go to heaven and I, and I can't sit next to him like John did. Well, the Bible tells us about that. You see, if we go over to the book of James, a little further back in the, uh, the New Testament, uh, we go past Hebrews and, and we go to James and back in James chapter number four, the Bible tells us this in James 4, 6, but he giveth more grace... Wherefore, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify ye hearts, your hearts, ye double-minded. So we see here uh, that the Bible tells us we can draw nigh to God. We can draw nigh uh, to God, and it even tells us how we can do that. The Bible says here uh, that we should uh, be humble and not proud. If we're going to draw nigh to God, the Bible says that God resisteth the proud. That, that means He pushes them away. He, he keeps them at a distance. And so if we want to be draw nigh to God, if we want to get close to God, we have to humble ourselves. What, what does it mean to be humble? Well, it means not to think too much of ourselves. Someone who is proud always thinks they're the best. They always think they're right. They always think things should be done their way. And so uh, we see here uh, that he says, listen, James, uh, this is James, the brother of Jesus, not James, the, the, uh, the disciple that we were talking about. But James, the brother of Jesus said, listen, if you're going to be close to Christ, you have to humble yourselves. James and, and John, uh, you know, the, they, they were men who were close to Christ. And they probably had to learn this lesson. Uh, as you saw in our skit, uh, there was a time when they wanted to be the, the hey man, we want to be the, the right and the left hand man uh, of Christ. And, and so uh, they sent their, they, they were trying to figure out how can we do this? How can we get this position? And, uh, and, and so they got their mom, got their mom to go uh, to Jesus and say, hey Jesus, I got some good boys here. I'll tell you what, they always listened to me. They were always obedient as children. When you come into your kingdom, you're the Messiah, you're the, you're the king. And, and so when you set up your kingdom, if you could just let them be on your right hand and your left, that, that's, that's kind of proud. 
They, 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 they had a kind of a little problem with pride, but they learned to be humble. And so we have to be learned to be humble if we're going to be close to Jesus. The Bible also says to submit yourself therefore to God. So not only are we humble, we don't think too highly of ourselves, but we're obedient to God. We submit to what He would have us to do. As we saw there already, uh, whenever Jesus said, hey, I'm going to go up in the mountains, Peter, James, and John, come with me. You know what they did? They went with him. They, they didn't complain. They weren't like, oh, Jesus, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a high place. You know, there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of walking and, and a lot of uphill. And, yeah, you know, my feet are just hurt. I, you know what? I think I'm just going to stay here. No, the Bible says they went along. Uh, later on, we see that, again, we talked about the garden. And, and, and the, the men uh, were there. And, and Jesus is like, listen, I'm going to go a little further. Peter, James, John, come with me. We, we don't see them there, uh, you know, complain. Well, Jesus, can I just stay here with these guys? You know, I, I want to pray with these guys. I want to stay here. Uh, but no, they went and they followed Jesus. They submitted uh, to his orders. Whenever he left, or whenever he called them, rather, they were there and they were with their father. And they had a, a business that, a, a, as, uh, as young men, those later on, that business probably would have been passed down to them, that they would have been fishermen and, and they would have had a livelihood. But when Jesus said, follow me, they submitted to him and followed after him. We also see there uh, that there's humility. Not only is there submission or obedience, but last, we see purity. Uh, the idea that, that as a Christian, we need to make sure we take care of our sins. The Bible says there, draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You, you see, as Christians, we're going to sin. As a matter of fact, in 1 John, it tells us if we say we have no sin, that the truth is not in us. We're, we're liars, uh, the Bible says. And so we're going to sin. Uh, that's part of, our, as part of who we are as human beings. We have flesh, and our flesh is tainted by sin, and our flesh wants to sin. And, and there's going to be those times that, not that we just sin because, oh, well, I'm a human, and that's what I, I, I just I got to do it. No, no, we can, we can resist sin. We can resist the devil. But there are going to come those times when we do mess up. There are going to come those times when we do sin, when we, when we disobey our parents, whenever we uh, get you know, in a pinch and we get scared. And so well, we, maybe we lie about uh, you know, why we don't have our homework or something like that. And, and we're going to sin, but that shouldn't be the course of our life. Well, we shouldn't just sin, well, just because, I, you know what, Jesus is going to forgive me anyway, so I'll just sin. I'll ask for forgiveness instead of permission. No, that shouldn't be our attitude. But when we do sin, in those times when, when we've just, you know, let God down and we realize, you know what, I did something I shouldn't have done. Here's what the Bible says. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible said back there in James that what are we to do? He says to cleanse your hands, ye sinner. What did the Bible say here uh, that Jesus would do if we would ask Him for forgiveness? He would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we, we, we draw to Him in humility. Don't think too highly of ourselves. No, we, we draw to Him in, in obedience or submission. We submit ourselves. Hey, the Bible, uh, we don't have Jesus here like John and James did to tell us what to do, but, but we have God's Word that tells us to be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. We have the Bible here telling us, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. We, we have the Bible here that tells us uh, not to, uh, to, to avoid sin and to, to, to stay from youthful lust and, and all those kind of things. And so we submit ourselves to, to God's commands. But then when we do mess up, when, when we do sin, when, when we do let the flesh get the best of us, we ask for forgiveness. And the Bible says if we'll do that, we can draw nigh to God. And, and, and you know what else the Bible says there? Not only if you draw nigh to Him, but the Bible says He'll draw nigh to us. And, and so you can think about it this way. If I'm standing over here and there's somebody else standing over there, and, and I take a step, then they take a step. And then I take a step and they take a step. And because we're both moving together, we're going to get together more quickly. It's not all on me. The Bible says if I'll just come to Him, He'll come to me and He'll meet me in the middle uh, and He'll help me and He'll walk with me and I can have a relationship. A am I going to be able to see Jesus here on earth like James and John did? No, but you know what? One day I'll see Him in heaven. But I can have a relationship with Him and I can be close to Him and, and through His Holy Spirit He can speak to my heart and He can help lead me and guide me and help me every single day 
of my life. Young people, as we close, can I tell you this? The first step in drawing nigh to God is uh, when we humble ourselves and trust Him as Savior. When we humble ourselves enough to say, God, you know what? I, I'm a sinner. I, I'm not going to think so much of myself to think that I've never sinned. God, I know I've sinned, and I know because of that I need Your Son as my Savior. And we put our faith in Him. When we do that, that starts us on that first, that's our first step to draw in closer to God. And that's His first step to draw in closer to us. And then we humble ourselves a little bit more and He takes another step and we take another step. And then we take another step in, in submitting to Him as we learn from God's Word. And we draw close to Him and we walk close to Him throughout our lives. And then one day we'll get to see Him in heaven. Uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day. And God, thank You for the example of James and John. God, help us to humble ourselves, help us to, to submit to you, help us to purify our hearts so that we can be close to you and that you can be close to us so you can speak to us and help us and lead us each and every day. I pray if there's one who hears today and they haven't trusted you as, your, as their Savior, God, I pray they would do that today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, draw nigh to God, young people. God bless you. sending in your answers and being part of our question of the week for that last week. And so now that brings us to this week's question of the week with Brother Tony. That's him. That's right. If you know the answer to the question of the week, uh, you can send it in along with your keyword. Don't forget uh, about the keyword. 2 739 6536 right there on the bottom of the screen, or if you're here in Junior Church, fill out your paper and drop it in the basket. So uh, here is this week's question of the week. Last week we asked if you knew what the name of the town that Peter and, uh, and Andrew were from. Was that was also the same town that Pete, or James and John were from. Bethsaida, yeah, right? Bethsaida. Yeah, Bethsaida. That's not the question. The question <laughs> is this. Uh, now we, we need another name. The name of James and John. What was their nickname? The people called them something. What was James and John's nickname? If you know the answer, send it in, 717-739-6536. Uh, and you can also add on your keyword there and uh, find out, or sorry, and get your name uh, up on the wheel for next week. Twice. Possibly twice. Yeah, that so, keyword, uh, keyword. you give them like a reminder? Yeah, we can remind them. This, the, is, this is the first week, so yeah. we're going to give you a reminder. Just on. Okay, the keyword? Keyword is thunder. thunder. So send the keyword in. Send in your answer to the question of the week. I'll give you a hint. They might overlap just a little bit. Uh, but send that in, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing your name on the wheel next week. Yeah. Hey, uh, that's next week. But this week, it is Family Focus Sunday. It's true. It's true. And if you're watching this on Sunday morning or maybe even Sunday afternoon, uh, we want to invite you to be with us tonight. Our, our family focus Sunday is from 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, but even into the evening service. And after service tonight, do you know what's happening? Uh, I heard something about games. Games. We're going to have football. We're going to have a beanbag call, a plinko, all kinds of games. And oh. every one of those games, just like Brother Matt said, Prizes. They got that wheel? They got the wheel. Yeah, that's my favorite game. It's easy. All you do is spin it and you win. Like, there's, you spin, you get a prize. Spin it to win it. I, I, it. I can win. You know what? I, I'm not good at anything, but I can win that game. And so come and be a part of that. I think we're going to have some snacks and different things as well. Uh, so we want to just have fun. It's family fun. It's family focus weekend. We want to have fun uh, as a family. And so we want to invite you, uh, our online junior church family, to be here with us uh, in our service and be part of our regular uh, church family as well. So hopefully you had a good Sunday. Maybe we'll see you this evening. If not, have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye.